Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here in my road drinking my morning coffee, looking sexy as hell as usual. And for those of you who say I don't look sexy as hell when I do these videos in my road, nobody cares what you think. I didn't ask you shit. Okay, someone sent me a link to something this morning that I saw it, and it's uh, my bro Jerry Ward is did a video showing him wearing one of those training masks. I'm not going to bash on Jerry because Jerry and I are friends. We get along. Whatever you might think of him is kind of irrelevant here. He and I get along. We don't have a fight between us. I know Jerry likes to try new things out. Jerry loves to experiment with any new shit that comes out. That's just the way he is. I'm cool with that. I understand that. That's just part of the way he likes to do things. Now, when it comes to these masks, uh, he probably wasn't aware that these masks are actually a scam. There is no legitimate science behind it. And even the whole idea behind restricting oxygen in general when you train is a bad one. The whole high altitude training thing is kind of nonsense. The reality is you would be better off living at a high altitude and then coming down to low altitude to train or even wear an oxygen mask that pumps oxygen to you when you train if you wanted to get the benefits of, of high altitude towards your training. And the benefits there being red blood cell count. But doing it for short periods of time, restricting oxygen for relatively short periods of time every day, like an hour or two hours tops for various types of training, isn't going to improve uh, red blood cell count, hemocrite, any of that. All it's going to do is inhibit your ability to train. It's going to reduce your performance. And if you reduce your performance while you're training, you're going to reduce your results. It's not beneficial. It's a trendy thing that hopefully goes away here soon. The data is not supporting it as being beneficial as far as I'm aware of. Now, I understand that it is cool that people want to look like Bane. Because I really liked that Batman movie too. But that's why God invented anabolic steroids for people who want to look like Bane. Alright guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. Oh, some people asked me for a quick fat loss update, because I haven't done one. You guys have no idea what I look like since I did my weigh-in pretty much the last shirtless video I have is from the weigh-in today before I beat back at the end of August. Show you guys where I'm at. Now, obviously, on remind guys, again, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not going to look like a bodybuilder. I will probably get lean enough to have abs in the next few months as I continue to cut down so that I can blow up lean in my weight class. If anyone thinks I'm obese still now or that I'm at an unhealthy or unathletic body fat, they literally have a mental disorder. They don't know anything about human body composition or health at that point. But I'm down to 98.5 kilos this morning, so I'm down almost 9 kilos, pretty well around 9 kilos. And I'll probably put on about 3 during my carb up. I'm not going to take the robe, I don't think, fully off uh, my, because uh, my mic is attached to it. But just to give you guys an idea, obviously I still have loose skin, I've still got love handles. But the loose skin will tighten up as I get leaner. Now let me go ahead and take it off so I can show you guys the back. And I'm obviously still very pale and hairy right now that is just the amount of fur that i grew since august because i was completely shaved to bring my scale weight down as much as possible for my way in for the british nationals <laughs> so yeah this is just how much fur i grew in that time I, i'll probably knock it back off again coming up here shortly because i have a way in for a meet so i will talk to you guys next time